Hi there, welcome to the UC Davis Tahoe Science Center virtual tour. My name is Bailey and I'm going to start our tour in front of this big map behind me. And this is a bathymetry map of Lake Tahoe, which shows the depth or the underwater topography of the lake. Now the darker blue the color on this map, the deeper the water is. So if you can see, right here is the darkest part of our bathymetry map. And that's the deepest point in Lake Tahoe, which is an underwater cliff that drops down 1,645 feet deep, making Lake Tahoe the second deepest lake in the U.S., just behind Crater Lake in Oregon. This underwater cliff right here is actually one of three fault lines that lie beneath Lake Tahoe, and it is named the State Line Fault Line because of its location on the northern state line of Lake Tahoe. And Lake Tahoe is actually one-third in Nevada and two-thirds in California. And the full state line cuts down the lake like this, and then starts heading over this way, and this side is Nevada, and this side is California. The second fault line is actually right beneath my feet here in Incline Village, and it heads out into the lake right here. And this is appropriately named the Incline Village Fault Line. The third and longest fault line in Lake Tahoe stretches up the west shore, and it is called the West Tahoe Fault Line, and it is shown by these underwater cliffs right here. You can head over to D. Elba State Park and take a walk along these cliffs that were created due to movement along this fault line. This earthquake faulting and volcanic uplifting helped form the Lake Tahoe Basin. On the west and east side of Lake Tahoe, the Sierra Nevada Mountain Range and the Carson Mountain Range were formed due to uplifting. And volcanic activity on the north side of Lake Tahoe formed Mount Pluto, and normal faulting resulted in a valley right between the two mountain ranges. More recently in geological history, glaciers on the Sierra Nevada mountain range helped shape the west side of Lake Tahoe, leaving behind ridges, otherwise known as moraines, that formed things like glacial lakes and even Emerald Bay. Lake Tahoe is estimated to be between two to four million years old. Approximately 12,000 to 30,000 years ago, a large earthquake along the West Tahoe faults triggered a massive underwater landslide. This moved large chunks of land from the underwater shelf just south of Tahoe City down to the bottom of the lake. You can see these large chunks of rock sticking up from the otherwise smooth bottom on our bathymetry map. The longest of these chunks is about a mile long, and the tallest is over 500 feet tall. The amount of energy released from these large blocks of land sliding deep into the lake triggered a tsunami which reverberated all around the Lake Tahoe Basin. You might notice that there's three different colors on our bathymetry map. Blue, green, and gray. And blue obviously represents the water in Lake Tahoe, but what's the difference between the green and the gray area? The green and the gray both represent the land that surrounds Lake Tahoe, but the green actually represents the Lake Tahoe watershed. Now, everywhere on Earth is part of a watershed, which is just the land area that collects into a common body of water. The Mississippi River watershed covers a giant portion of the U.S., Whereas the Lake Tahoe watershed is relatively very small, Lake Tahoe makes up 60% of its own watershed. Every drop of water that falls into the green area on this map, our watershed, will travel down the mountains and into Lake Tahoe. And on its journey to the lake, it will pick up litter and sediments that will eventually alter Lake Tahoe clarity. Now imagine if these individual water droplets had a much larger distance to travel, they would have the ability to pick up way more litter and sediments before reaching the lake. If you've ever been to the Mississippi River, you can definitely tell a difference between the water clarity of it and Lake Tahoe, and that has a lot to do with the size difference of its watershed. Lake Tahoe's size is so massive that it can be hard to wrap your head around. It can be for me at least. I'm going to provide you with a few fun facts about the lake to try and give you a better understanding of just how big Lake Tahoe is. The surface elevation of Lake Tahoe is 6,225 feet with an average depth of about 1,000 feet deep. This is the elevation of Carson City, Nevada. So next time you're in Carson, take a look west at the mountains and try and imagine how deep you are into the lake. At its widest point, Lake Tahoe is 12 miles wide, and at its longest point, it's 22 miles long. It has 72 miles of road that wraps around Lake Tahoe, and without taking any stops, it's about three hours to drive all the way around to the lake. If you're standing on the North Shore, you can't actually see somebody on the South Shore beaches because of the curvature of the earth. Lake Tahoe has a surface area of 191 square miles, and it holds about 40 trillion gallons of water. If you were to empty Lake Tahoe over the whole state of California, 
you would be standing in the depth of 14 inches of water, and it would take about 600 years for the lake to refill. There are 63 rivers and streams that flow into Lake Tahoe. There's only one that flows out, and this outlet is the Truckee River in Tahoe City. However, this is not the only way that water leaves the lake. Approximately half a billion gallons of water evaporate from the surface of the lake daily. This would meet the daily water needs of 5 million Americans. That's all I have for the map section of our tour, but please check out our other videos to see the rest of the Tahoe Science Center. Thanks for joining me!